Okay. Um, Java is often where AI needs to be. Um, that seems to me an uncontroversial statement. If I said that to folks at an academic machine learning conference, they might roll their eyes at me. However, I believe we can, without blushing, make a stronger statement and say Java is almost everywhere AI needs to be. Those same folks at the academic conference might laugh instead and jokingly tell me to get my coat. I think they do have a point, but Java is in a stronger position than many might believe. So let me explain. Consider a machine learning model, a central software unit of any machine learning system. It is essential but insufficient on its own. It cannot function in isolation. So we need additional code to make it function in a larger system. For example, code that transforms text into a sequence of discrete units called tokens, referred to as tokenization, and code that converts tokens into multidimensional numerical vectors, referred to as embedding, which have an input to large language models, or code that quantizes a model to reduce the size of its weights, or refines the model with additional data, tests it, deploys it, monitors it, and so on and so on. And as the system gets larger, there will likely be many models, some smaller, more specialized and capable of executing close to applications, some larger, more general and powerful, operated as a service requiring specialized execution at scale. We will connect those models to information sources such as relational databases, vector databases, or other data sources for retrieval augmented generation, thereby enabling large language models to provide more accurate responses without constant retraining. We will integrate the models with other software to automate processes such as that for enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, or healthcare, and businesses in general. And those models will crucially be connected to each other to form multi-agent systems. Within this large system of software surrounding these central software units, we will encounter Java quietly connecting everything together. This central software unit, the machine learning model, is but a tiny fraction of all the software required for it to usefully function. Much of that additional software is connecting things together, reliably so at scale, in production, the costs of which are maintainable over many years. Java excels at this, which is why I think Java is almost everywhere AI needs to be. And this conference bolsters my claim, as we shall see from my fellow speakers, Rod and Liz, after me, and from speakers in many sessions this week. That's great, but it's not everywhere, so I am not satisfied. Can we do better? and connect Java closer to or be part of the central software unit. I hope to persuade you that we can. So instead of this being true, we can enhance Java and make this true. So how do we go about this? Java's chief architect, Mark Reinhold, presented the keynote at Java One this year. He eloquently explained, after three decades, Java remains, and I quote, one of the most popular programming language platforms in the world used by millions of developers to build mission-critical systems for organizations large and small. I recommend you watch it. Mark explains part of the answer as to why Java's been so successful is a relentless focus on developer productivity and program performance in the face of constantly evolving demands on the Java platform. We are seeing this now with AI, which demands new ways to represent Java code, processing large amounts of data, leverage native machine learning libraries, and execute on different kinds of hardware. So with this in mind, how should we go about enhancing Java and get closer to that central software unit, the machine learning model? We look for pain points, which lead us to solutions as new features, surfacing up as JDK enhancement proposals in the open JDK community. Some pain points are so acute and some solutions are so involved that we create entire new projects for them in the OpenJDK community. To see what I mean, let's consider two acute pain points related to Java and AI. GP using GPUs is too hard. Developing machine learning models is difficult. Both of those are true today. We want to leverage the vast performance advantages that GPUs offer. 
and we want Java to be a great platform machine learning model development. Both of these are possible, but today developers are not productive. It's just too hard. Developers may be forced to write code in a different and probably lower level language. For example, OpenCLC or CUDA C code and embed that code in strings or text blocks in their Java program. Or they may be forced to write unnatural looking code that is hard to read and maintain. To address the pain points of their users, determined library developers might reach for unsafe, unsupported, and or unsuitable mechanisms, creating fragile and potentially insecure libraries that become a liability. How shall we, as stewards of the Java platform, address these pain points? We will identify the foundational building blocks in the JDK, such that we can use those blocks to build libraries that, for example, leverage GPUs, such that we can use those libraries to write Java code that runs on GPUs. The JDK foundations are protected. Our efforts to gradually ensure the integrity by default of the JDK allows us to change the JDK internals at will without breaking libraries and applications. Library developers cannot descend into the basement with their power tools and undermine the foundation's integrity. The same protections are also afforded to libraries if they so choose, ensuring applications can't undermine the library's integrity. After all, no one wants to maintain their internal APIs as if they're public APIs. The end result is a beautiful, stable tower of software written in Java. The pain points I mentioned that GPUs, using GPUs is too hard, or machine learning, developing machine learning models is too difficult, are so acute we created Project Babylon. In Babylon, we will deliver part of the solution, a foundational building block to address those pain points. What those pain points have in common is the need to translate Java into another language, to translate Java code into code of a foreign programming model, something that is not the Java programming model, such as translating Java code to GPU code or translating Java code to a machine learning model. Let's explore further and consider our first pain point using GPUs is too hard. Here is some ordinary looking Java code we call a kernel, representing a GPU program. It squares the integer elements of an array. It's nothing too complicated here. It's the kind of natural looking Java code we'd like to write, especially so if we're familiar with GPU programming. We want to translate it to the equivalent of a GPU program written in OpenCLC which is a dialect of C for representing cross-platform GPU programs or kernels. We certainly don't want to jump directly to the right-hand side and write that C program and embed it in a text block of our Java program. How can we do this translation? We do so by using features of Project Babylon. First, we reflect over the Java program not only the surface details of the methods, which we can do today using reflection, but deeper to include the Java code of the method bodies. This deeper form of reflection yields an in-memory representation of that Java code we call a code model, which is a bit like an abstract syntax tree for compilers. Second, we translate the code model to an equivalent OpenCL C program. What I've just described is Babylon, Project Babylon's first feature called, unsurprisingly, Code Reflection, a Java platform feature which provides the ability to reflect over code under the surface of a Java program, yielding code models which can then be translated. More abstractly, the Java code on the left is described by the Java programming model as specified by the Java language, virtual machine, and API specifications. The code on the right is described by a foreign programming model, one that is unknown to the Java platform. In our example, this foreign programming model is the OpenCL programming model that is specified by the Kronos group. The JDK does not and should not know about OpenCL. It's the Java library with GPU support, the middle part of that tower of software I showed earlier that knows about the OpenCL programming model. Now, Project Pabalon's code reflection 
is a necessary feature, but insufficient on its own to fully address the pain points. We need to do something with that OpenCL code. Babylon needs a colleague, one whose features are already present in the JDK. That colleague is Project Panama, and they have a very close bond. We can think of their relationship like this. Project Panama is to foreign libraries, as Project Babylon is to foreign programming models. The features developed by these two projects provide the foundational building blocks to build that beautiful Tower of Babel I showed earlier. As I mentioned, we obviously need to do something with that OpenCL code, like running on a GPU, that's clearly our aim. To do that, we need to interact with the OpenCL library. Commonly, the first interaction is to query what GPU hardware or devices are available. The OpenCL, C the OpenCL specification declares a C method called get, sorry, CL get platform IDs, that is the starting point for the query. We need to call this foreign or native method from Java. Java's answer for this used to be the Java native interface, or JNI. JNI is both difficult to use and too slow. You might give up. It's too much work. It's just too painful. Thankfully, Project Panama's Foreign Function and Memory API, or FFN API for short, and a tool called JExtract make this much easier. To call the OpenCL library CLGet platform IDs method with the FFM API, you start with the C header file that declares it. You run it through the JExtract tool to generate a Java source file that declares the Java bindings. Those bindings directly refer to, sorry, and, and then we run it through the JExtract tool to uh, generate the bindings, and those bindings directly refer to the OpenCLC library. You don't need to write native code wrappers. You don't need to compile them into native libraries. No other files are required. Calling CLGet platform IDs from Java then is a simple matter of importing and invoking that native method. Some of you may be wondering, is that a real Java program up there? There's no class declaration. There's no public static void main. Where is all that infamous boilerplate? Well, Nikolai stole my thunder a little bit with his slides. <laughs> Thanks to JET512, that boilerplate is now optional. JET512 delivered in Java 25, introduced compact source files and instant main methods. This is great for beginners learning the language, but it's also great for experienced developers writing and maintaining small programs. It looks and feels like Java. It is, of course, Java, but with lower cognitive overhead. OK, returning to our example, using Project Panama's foreign function and memory API, we call the foreign OpenCLC compiler and compile our OpenCL program. Then again, using the FFM API, call the foreign function, call the foreign OpenCL runtime to execute the compiled OpenCL program on a GPU. What I've just described there is Project Babylon's second feature a Java library called the Heterogeneous Accelerator Toolkit, or HAT for short. Using HAT, a developer can write Java code, debug and test on the JVM, and then execute on the GPU for performance. Not only does HAT use code reflection for translating Java kernel code to GPU kernel code, it also uses code reflection to analyze how those kernels are invoked to further improve performance optimizing the scheduling of kernels on the GPU and optimizing the data movement between the JVM and the GPU. And last but not least, HAT provides a plug-in architecture to support the running of kernels on different kinds of GPU hardware, such as hardware from AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA. We've seen how we can address the first pain point, that using GPUs is too hard. Now let's move on to our second pain point, Developing machine learning models is difficult. Consider this Java code representing a machine learning model written in Java. A machine learning model can be expressed as code that accepts tensors, they're just multidimensional arrays, as inputs, operates on those tensors using some linear algebra functions, and returns tensors as outputs. Some tensors are called weights and are produced by training and can be very large. Similarly to the GPU code, this is the kind of natural looking code we'd like to write. So we want to translate it to a simplified representation 
of a machine learning model, foreign code that focuses on tensors and their operations. We sort of boiled away the Java code. This simplified representation is more amenable to further processing, such as automatically differentiating it, transforming it for training, and exporting it to an interoperable format. We certainly don't want to write a Java program that builds an in-memory representation of that machine learning model ourselves. That's what compilers are for. Using Babylon's code reflection, we can perform such a translation, from which we can export a simplified representation to an Onyx model. Onyx stands for Open Neural Network Exchange, and it's two things, a format for representing machine learning models and a runtime for executing those models. Onyx models are a constrained form of computer code with constant data embedded in them. Onyx enables cross-platform execution of machine learning models independent of the platforms used for development and training. We can use Project Panama's FFM API to execute the Onyx model in the Onyx runtime. The Onyx runtime provides performant model execution on CPUs and GPUs. And what I've just described is a prototype library called Java Onyx Script. Using Java Onyx Script library, we can easily represent machine learning models such as Llama or Phi models succinctly in Java, export them to Onyx models, and execute them in the Onyx runtime. In fact, we can also go in the reverse direction and transform Onyx models into Java code with a bit of guidance. So we've developed this prototype for two reasons. First, we want to show what is possible for machine learning using the features of Project Panama and Project Babylon. And second, we can evaluate if those features are fit for purpose and learn where we can make improvements. To learn more, you may be interested in the following sessions by my colleagues and me. Anna and Liz will present more about Project Babylon and GPUs. Adam will present more about Java Onyx script prototype. And I will present about these and other relevant features in my session. So I hope I've managed to persuade you with the building blocks that we are working on that we can connect Java closer to or be part of the central software unit, the machine learning model that is part of a larger system that is connected using Java. And then we can honestly say without blushing that Java is everywhere AI needs to be. I hope you enjoy the conference, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.